Okay, so uh, the next thing I want to talk about uh, in our walls here, if I go to edit type. All right, so what I want to talk about is un under function here, we've got these little these little numbers here. All right, and what these are are uh, layer priorities. They're what basically called priorities. All right, and what they are is these little they're numbers in the parentheses here behind the function of each of these materials. So each function has a layer priority, uh, one through five. Five being the high, five being the highest, one being the lowest. What they basically are is it's kind of like rocks, paper, scissors, where you have uh, you know paper beats rock, and uh, and uh, scissors beats paper. So what they are, their layer priorities. One is is the highest priority, and so uh, five is the lowest priority. And what it ha what it comes down to basically is when two walls intersect each other. So let me take a second wall, and I'm going to make a wall. Um, like a completely different wall than that one and I'm going to draw that second wall and I want it to intersect the first wall that I drew alright so see how I drew that wall that second wall and I um, drew it right across the first wall and what happened is those two walls then um, joined together so anytime you draw on a wall and it touches another wall those walls join together and you probably noticed that in our tiny house project so, um, and you'll notice what happened too is that certain materials are cutting all the way through that wall and other materials are stopping short. That's basically what, that's all being controlled by those layer priorities. So if I go back to my original CMU wall here, I go to edit type. So one has the highest priority, which is our metal stud layer. So that basically cuts through everything. All right, so that's paper beating rock every time. Um, and then uh, four, I'm sorry, yeah, four and five here are finished materials, and um, those cannot pass through anything lower than um, than a four or a five. So once a f material with a layer priority goes through a material that has a priority of five, it'll cut through it. But once it reaches a layer that has a priority of three, it won't cut through it. All right. So if I go back to our wall and take another look again, so here's our metal stud layer and our metal stud layer from the other wall and they join together and they create you know kind of one space and they cut through all the other materials so he have um, gypsum board I think had the lowest priority and I had a priority of five so as soon as the gypsum board goes down and it hits that uh, CMU wall which had a layer priority of four then it stops alright but on the other hand when it when you have the brick here on the outside there coming up from the bottom going through the gypsum board. The gypsum board had a layer priority of five. The brick had a layer of four, so it goes through, gets to the metal stud layer, which has a priority of one, and it stops. And then the airspace here, you'll notice the airspace goes through, cuts through the CMU, but then joins with itself, joins with the other air layer of the other, uh, of other wall. All right, so that is basically what the layer priorities are on here. So that basically affects the joints. Now, if you don't want two walls to join together, what you'll do is, let me just kind of edit this wall here. And there's going to be situations like this where you don't want two walls to join together. So to get a wall to not join with another wall, what you do is select one of the walls, and then you get this little blue dot here. And the blue dot is a, basically a grip that you can use and pull and push the wall. All right, so I'm going to select that wall. But what you do is you hold your cursor over it, and you right-click, and you're going to say Disallow Join. All right, what that does basically is it doesn't allow those two walls to join together. All right, so I disallow join. That, okay, so disallow join. Let me pull this other wall across here so that they meet at a 90 degree corner. All right, and then I can take that other wall and do the same thing. So I select that other wall, hold my cursor over the blue dot, right click and say disallow join. Oops. Yeah, there you go. Oops, there we go. So now those walls don't join. They're basically drawing right over the top of each other. All right, so there, that basically would, um, is how do you disallow join. So it's going to actually come in handy here pretty soon, or uh, in, a, in a little while. There's always going to be a situation where you don't want two walls to join. The other thing I wanted to explain, too, is what that core uh, boundary means. All right, so let me go to the core boundary. So I go to pick the wall, edit type, edit structure, and we talked about this core boundary here. And the core boundary was basically defined by these green lines here. All right, so this is the, oops, let me see if you can see it a little bit better if I type in thick lines. Let 
All right, go to my preview. So there's my core boundary, which is basically these green lines here. So the idea here behind a core boundary is um, uh, is to define kind of what the overall structure of the wall is. So when we're doing this, uh, when we're doing projects, and I'm going to just draw a couple more walls on this thing. I'm going to draw a couple interior walls. And I'm going to draw another one of these walls. All right, so when we're dimensioning on this project here, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, uh, I, when I select dimensioning here, I've got a couple different options that I can dimension to. I can dimension to the wall center line, wall faces, center of core, and faces of core. All right, so, and also you'll, you may remember too when you're drawing walls, I go to walls, I'm going to draw this wall here. For your location line, you have a couple different choices. You've got the wall center line for your location line, the core center line, the finish face uh, exterior, finish face interior, and then core face interior and core face exterior. All right, so you've got core as a choice for dimensioning and when you're drawing walls. Now the reason why you have that is uh, basically when we're doing dimensioning for a project or when you're, when you're, um, you basically want to dimension to the first material that's going to be constructed on that wall. So and would it be, if we were building this this wall here, this is a, um, this is my CMU wall, metal stud with gypsum board on the inside. What would be the first material, first part of that wall that you would construct? Just the metal studs, exactly. Yep. So the metal studs. So when you're dimensioning this project, um, you want to dimension to the metal studs because they're the first thing um, dimensioned. If I were to dimension this project and I were to dimension to the gypsum board, so for example, I go to dimension. I'm going to dimension to the um, to the gypsum board here, and I'm going to dimension to the gypsum board here, and then the, to the gypsum board here. So if I were to actually build this thing, then I would basically have to do some a little bit of math here. I'd have to subtract the 5 8 inch gypsum board. So to make things way easier for the person actually building this wall, the thing we want to do is dimension to those uh, metal studs. So that's part of the reason why we have that core boundary around them so that I can pick, so when I'm dimensioning here, I can say I'm going to pick to the um, face of core. And then that basically means that my uh, dimension will snap right to the face of that core or the face of that metal stud. And then I can dimension to the, so I can much easy, it's much easier than for me to dimension to the the metal studs. So when I'm doing my dimensions. So uh, that's part of the reason why we have that um, that core boundary set. And then also, same goes if you're um, drawing the walls here, using the wall command. You could use the uh, face of core or center of core if you wanted to as a choice for your location line. But that basically is just kind of an example of how what um, uh, how you would use the that core and set the core boundary and all that kind of stuff. So, all right, let me stop that.